One way to know how many references there are to an object is reference counting. With reference counting, we're going to make room in every object to hold a number that is the count of the, the references to that object. And so whenever we have an object and we put a reference to that object in a register or in some other newly allocated object, then we will increment the count on that object. Uh, so it'll count from 0, 1, 2, and so on. Um, when we stop referring to an object, that is when there's a register referring to the object and we're going to change the register, or when we lose some object uh, that was referring to the object in a different way, uh, then we'll decrement the object's count. And if we decrement an object's count to zero, then that's where we put the free. At that point, we know there are no other references to the object and it's safe to free it. And when we free one object, that may release references to other objects, which may decrement their, which will decrement their counts, which may decrement their counts to zero. And so then they will be freed. So there can be a chain reaction of a freeze due to a decrement. Let's look at this in pictures. And in these pictures, I'm going to draw at the top some, some registers. So each of these boxes corresponds to a register like KREG or VREG or MVREG. I'm just going to draw a couple of them to be representative of all the registers. The blue box, that corresponds to our memory vector. And instead of drawing individual vector slots, I'm just drawing objects. These squares here correspond to objects that are allocated within that vector. The orange lines are references um, from, from registers and objects to other objects. So this orange line means that this register has the address of this object. And then the number here is, of course, its reference count. Uh, so this object has one reference to it from that register there. This object down here, it has two references. It has one from the object above it in the picture, but also one from the object below it. So the numbers in the boxes correspond to the number of orange arrows going into it. Now let's suppose we change this orange arrow, this, this reference in this object, uh, from pointing to that object to pointing to this other object. When we do that, we'll decrement the reference count from 1 to 0, and this reference count gets incremented from 2 to 3. But the fact that we decremented this one to zero means that we can release it. And in the process of releasing it, we dropped the reference down to this object, so its count went back down to two. Another thing that might happen is we might change this register so it no longer refers to this object. In that case, the object's count will go from one down to zero. And then because that's zero, we will delete this object and drop this reference down to that other object. Its count goes from one to zero, which means now we need to free this object, and so on. So that's the basic idea of reference counting. We have to add a number to each object, and we have to take care every time we change a register or a value inside some other object that we have to update the count. And if we adapted our code to do this, um, then it would look something like this. So we're, not, we're still using matching and constructors, but you'll be able to get the idea to see how these would turn into reference counting. So if we're in interp in the lam e case, then there may be some values still sitting in the value register. We uh, decrement its, its uh, reference count because we're about to install a closure in that value register. We're losing whatever the old value in that register was. Meanwhile, as we allocate the closure, we're picking up a reference to the environment that's currently in the environment register. So environment register, whatever object it's pointing to, already has a count of at least one because the register is referring to it. But close v, in addition to being a malloc, has to correspond to a ref plus increment the reference counter on that environment. We don't have to do anything with body expert because all of our experts, the code, uh, that is allocated static, statically with code malloc. Meanwhile, this closure that we just added, allocated, it starts out with a reference count of zero, so we need to increment that reference count because vreg is now referring to it. And then we can jump on to continue. Inside of continue, there will be other code like do app k. Uh, here, we've got a function value inside our continuation and uh, the rest of the continuation. And we have to, you know, pull, uh, pull the expression out of the, the closure. That doesn't involve any reference counting because, again, co code is statically allocated. But for the environment, when we pull it out of the environment, uh, we cons onto it and we set it into the environment register, that involves some, some reference counting. We need to drop the reference to the old environment register. Uh, this cons needs to reference each of these two arguments, so increment the reference counter on the closures environment, um, and then ultimately increment the register, the reference count on this newly created cons. We also need to increase the reference count on the rest of the list because that's going to go into KREG, and meanwhile decrement the old value of KREG. Now there's a subtlety here. We had to uh, do this ref plus and this ref minus in that order. 
because if we did a ref minus on k reg first, then it goes away, maybe k goes away as well. So we need to um, be careful to increment and say we are going to have a new reference to k even when k reg's object goes away, which might, uh, which will imply a ref minus on k and might cause it to be released. So that points out a subtlety of reference counting. You have to be careful not only to have all the ref minuses and ref pluses there, but get them in the right order. Another problem with reference counting is that it doesn't deal gracefully with cycles in our graph. Now, it turns out we can't create cycles in our current curly interpreter because we don't have any kind of state like boxes or recursive bindings, uh, but it is a drawback in general with reference counting. And to see what I mean, suppose that our picture looks like this, and suppose that um, uh, we have, in fact, a reference from this bottom object back up to that object there. So this object in the middle has a reference count of two because there are two orange arrows going in. Right? So somehow in our language we had a way of creating this cycle. Now let's again, like we did before, change this register so it no longer points to that object. The reference count goes down to one. And uh, the, the key here is that that's one and not zero. These two objects form a little island all by themselves. No other parts of the code can reference them, uh, but by simply reference counting we don't get down to zero and we don't reclaim that space. So reference counting is not a good choice if you can have cycles in your heap.